Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. All praises and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to come to you with another reminder from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is our 17th hadith from the compilation of Imam Lawi rahimahullahu ta'ala from the hadith and scenes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of these ahadiths and all of these traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are just reminders for you and I that we can try and take benefit from them. We can implement them in our life and we can put and practice them in our life to become better humankind and better human being inshallah. So today's hadith is a hadith narrated by Abiyya ala Shaddad ibn Yawsin radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Inna Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shay that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has enjoyed excellence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoyed goodness with regard to everything and then he continues فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسَنُ الْقِطْلَةِ that when you are to kill then you kill in a good manner وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسَنُ الْذِبْحَةِ and when you are to slaughter slaughter in a good manner then slaughter the animal in a good way then Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم continue وَلْيُحِدَّ أَحَدُكُمْ شَفَرَتَهُ Then one of you, the person who was to kill the slaughterer, he shall sharpen his knife. Let him sharpen his knife. And Rasulullah s.a.w. continues, وَلْيُرِحْ ثَبِيحَتَهُ And he shall let the slaughtered animal, he shall let the slaughtered animal die in comfort, die in ease and contentment, die comfortably. So Rasulullah s.a.w. his hadith again, bringing us and showing us the way and method and the compassion that a Muslim, a believer, should handle and carry himself irrespective of whatever deed and irrespective of whatever action he's carrying out. And this word Ihsan, it is a word we heard time and time again. It's a word we've heard numerous times. And the meaning is vast. That we may give you a one word meaning, we may say excellence, we may say good conduct, but the meaning of, ikhla- of ihsan is vast. And one of those mean of ihsan is that of ikhlas, sincerity. And which is a priority for any action that we do. We do it with ihsan and ikhlas sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. As in one famous hadith, which is referred to hadith of Jibreel. The hadith when Jibreel alayhi salam came and he taught the companions wa ta'ala wa ajma'een by asking Rasulullah s.a.w. some questions in front of them. And that question when it was asked, what is ihsan? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned, أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك That the ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you see him. And really you cannot see Allah but know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. And that is the core of our ihsan. Of when it comes to doing ihsan of an action. When we see of doing a good action, doing excellent in our action. It comes to this core of ikhlas, of sincerity, of intention. We are doing that action. Sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and no other for no other being and no other creation. We cannot do it for our father. Oh, because my father is looking at me, I'm going to pray my salah. Or my father is looking to me, that's when I'm going to read the Quran. Or when you go to the masjid, because the imam is there or the sheikh is there, then you want to stand and perform long salah. So the sheikh and the imam may look at you and say, Oh, mashallah, very well devoted brother. But no, our intention that is within our heart and that is really our ihsan. That is really the good conduct and the good way of how we do something with ikhlas sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the command of ihsan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even emphasizing it so much in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself gave us his command. And it is a command, it is a verse that we have heard. Those that attend the Jummah, Salah and the Khutbah weekly and those who heard any Khutbah, the Imam generally in his second Khutbah terminates the Khutbah with these words. And the ayah goes, Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Wa ita'i dhil qurba. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He command with justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands with ihsan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that you give help towards the kid and kin, towards your relation, towards your family. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even gives a command about carrying out ihsan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives life and death. He mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, this life that he given us, the one who created life and death, 
is for that purpose that he tests ayyukum ahsanu amala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said whichever to see which one of you will do ahsanu amala will do good action will do ihsan with your action so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes this aspect of a humankind of human being his the creation of the of his this this insan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even emphasized that aspect in the Quran for us to do our action with ihsan to do our action with excellence and good conduct and this is a primary principle for us as Muslims that we can follow from the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith we see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have written and have ordained ihsan on each and everything have ordained excellency with regards to each and every aspect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith to show how excellence and good conduct treating one another and treating other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been emphasized Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith mention of one way of dealing nice and showing mercy towards animals that Rasulullah said that even that animal that you're going to kill that you're going to utilize that you're going to slaughter to use you're going to kill it so you can use it even that animal there is good way of how you carry out that action even though you're going to kill it we may think oh as a human can we say this animal is going to die anyway what what difference does it make but Islam did not teach us like that that's why Rasulullah some started off the hadith that Ihsan, good conduct, has been written in each and everything. And for regards to that, even with animals that you're going to slaughter, even for your consummation, we have to be merciful towards it. As another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, that man la yarham la yurham, that whosoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. And another warden of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ar-Rahimuna, يَرْحَمُهُمُ الرَّحْمَانِ يَرْحَمُ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَرْحَمُكُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ That are rahimuna those that show mercy, Allah, the Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show mercy upon them. And يَرْحَمُ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Show mercy to those on the earth, يَرْحَمُكُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is in the heaven, which is referring to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show mercy towards you. So here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam show us and advise that yes, you're going to kill the animal, you're going to slaughter the animal for your own benefit. But treat that animal in good manner. Treat that animal with respect. That is why Rasulullah said that even before when you're going to slaughter that animal, we have to use a knife, we have to use a, uh, a cutlass or any sharp thing to cut the neck of the animal. Rasulullah said, Fal yuhad. So you shall sharpen it. You shall sharpen that stuff. Don't just take a, a knife or a blade that is, is dull and it's blunt and it's you passing it and it's training but no you must sharpen it that when you pass it without hesitation it will slice and it will start cutting so even that animal whenever we want to kill that animal we have to show mercy towards that animal and it's sad reality today that yes even when it comes for example korbani this is not a topic about korbani but we we utilize animal we kill we slaughter animals for korbani which also is applicable from this Advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how we deal with the animals. And it is sad to see that many a time when it comes for Qurbani, people that do the zabih and do the slaughtering, alhamdulillah. But <clears throat> when it comes to treating and dealing with the animals, na'udhu billah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, the treatment and the brutality that they give towards the animal, it is heartbreaking. For example, on that day of Eid, on that time when they want to slaughter the animal, sometimes because the animal will not, will not walk to go towards the place of slaughtering, that even though it's within one area, but because they have to take it from point A to point B, sometimes they will just drop that animal on the ground and drag it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for this brutality or negligence that we don't have the conscience of this. This animal is for our ibadat. This animal that we're going to make slaughter for Qurbani, it is our ibadah, it is our worship that we are doing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, the animal have no need for us. We are the one that is in need for the animal. How much more shall we show that respect and that honor to that animal? <coughs> and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that we treat animal even with kindness. So for those that say that Islam is not a, a, is a religion of kindness, this hadith even shows and emphasizes that as per that even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us the manners and etiquette of how we should be 
and what we should prepare before we even want to slaughter an animal that you sharpen your blade make sure your blade is sharpened and not just that what to show that emphasis of how your blade must be sharpened Rasulullah said that the blade should be such sharpened that the animal should not even punish when it die the animal should not be punished to die which means he should die such an easy death in comfort without any struggle and subhanAllah I have even witnessed such animal uh, that when they die when the knife passes it's so fast without even a blink of an eye the animal is already dying the blood is already oozing out of its veins without any hesitation and yes being merciful towards animal this is a tremendous reward another hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari mention of a man who was a sinner he was passing by and he was thirsty he was traveling and he was thirsty and he decided to go down a well uh, for water so he went he got water and was coming back up the well he saw a dog panting in the hot desert for water so this man decided to go back take his shoe fill it with water and brought it and fed and quench the dog with water and due to this act of kindness towards the animal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him of his sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannah and again another point here that for those that something criticize Muslims that yes oh Muslim uh, Islam does not um, allow Muslims to be kind towards dogs or to be kind to animals only certain animals but irrespective of whatever the animal is once it's not Najas al Ain, once it's not a Najas an impure animal irrespective but being kind to an animal is part of Islam it is a fact it's an act of Islam it's an act to be kind towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are all a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different forms in different shape but we are all a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to show mercy unto those on the face of the earth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show mercy unto us yes with regards to keeping dogs and different animals as pets that's a different story but doesn't change the fact of being kind towards animals even though you cannot keep them as a pet it does not change the fact of showing kindness towards that animal because just as you and I are creation that animal is also a creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the act of kindness towards an animal may be that act that give us the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help us to enter into Jannah and another part of the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he even mentioned from this regards to killing and regards to when you kill you kill good this even is applicable in regards to when most people say that Islam is a, a religion of fighting but even though Islam is not a religion of fighting but even though that those times when the Muslim went into jihad a Muslim fight because of battle wage against them even then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he admonished and he advised his companions of how to carry out whenever they were fighting how to conduct themselves whenever fighting that is why Islam never allowed the killing of women Islam never allowed the killing of children Islam never allowed the killing of elderly the only ones who were killed were those that used to stand up and fight with a sword against another that was the only one that was allowed and still when you were when they were being killed or when they were killed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will also point out to the companions etiquettes of how you go about doing it and not just mutilate the body Muslims were never allowed to mutilate another person body even when they were fighting but the method and going and the systematic way and etiquette of going about to show ihsan to show kindness because he was still a human even though they were fighting they were enemies he was still a human so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam show us as Islam that we show ihsan we show kindness we show excellent conduct towards each and everything and we do it solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in regards to that it may draw us the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which you and I we all need because it is not our action that will gain us entry into Jannah but it is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will grant us his forgiveness and grant us entry into Jannah and we all need the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our success both in this world and the hereafter and if we are ever thinking if we are ever to think that it is our action that is going to give us entry into Jannah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for that and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to change our intention and change our thought that we need and we are dependent of his mercy for us to enter into Jannah and carrying out our action with good conduct our excellent manner and excellent way dealing with one another and treating human and treating the, the animals and creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with good conduct is one way of drawing from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said irhamu man fil ard show mercy to those on the earth yarhamu man fil sama the one in the heaven will show mercy upon you so I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that he showed us with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his mercy also remove the difficulty and the calamity that we're all facing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his mercy remove this virus that is affecting us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove every difficulty with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove every difficulty from each and every household and our community and across our country and across the world. Jazakumullah khair for tuning in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.